Hi, I'm Tricia from Equine Energetics, and I'm a horse communicator and healer. If you would like to become an animal communicator or develop your own skills, I've got some tips for you today. These are ways that you can practice and ways that you can prepare yourself for success. There are things for you to remember uh, before you get started or while you're in your animal communication um, practice with your horse. There are some fairly simple things that you can do to improve the connection between you and your horse and the likelihood of actual communication with him. You can try these things out by sitting somewhere near your horse. Get comfortable, have your feet flat on the floor or the ground and your eyes closed. Make sure that you're not gonna be disturbed by anyone or by your phone. The first big tip is don't wait for an emergency to have a go at practicing your animal communication skills. Or in the midst of an emergency, don't expect really accurate, super information to be flowing your way. The chances are that when you're in the midst of a traumatic experience, there's too much personal stuff going on um, that history, love, attachment, um, along with worry, fear, and all of that, there's far too much emotional investment to get clear answers. So make sure you're practicing when things are going well and there's no urgency. Number two, remove emotion from the equation. We touched on that a little bit. Before you start, set aside all emotion. You need to come at this from a calm, balanced, non-judgmental place. So get yourself in that headspace before you start. You're not going to be picky about <laughs> what is or isn't happening or what your horse is or isn't saying. Be judgmental and remove the emotion. Number three, empty your mind. Easier said than done. Make sure your head is as clear as possible. If you do find that your thoughts are wandering, one, you know, what's for tea tonight, take a deep breath and focus only on the in and out of your breathing. Number four, ground yourself. Your breathing will bring you into the present moment and into your body. Start to notice how your feet feel on the floor or the ground and let yourself get heavier and more grounded. So you're breathing, you're getting grounded, you're in the moment, you're doing it at a convenient and calm, non-urgent moment, and you're clearing your mind and not being emotional about it. Number five is to think positive. So clear away any expectations, any doubts, any negative self-talk. Just be open and curious to whatever comes up. Number six, and this is important, ask one question. Now you've got yourself comfortable, you probably want to ask your horse a question. And I would recommend giving this some thought in advance. Know what you're going to ask. Know what your one question is. You don't want to bombard him with a million questions that he can't decipher. So think about what you really want to know. It's also beneficial if your question is phrased so that it has a yes or no answer. If it's an open-ended question, why are you blah, 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 
and you're a beginner to this, it can be much harder to get a clear answer. So ask a simple question that has a yes, no answer and go from there. Number seven is to think pink. If it feels like nothing is happening or that you're not getting any information or response from him, just think pink. I know it doesn't sound like animal communication, but believe me, this one thing will connect you with your horse. Visualize surrounding yourself with a bubble of pink light. It's a bit like approaching, not approaching a dog that you know is scared of you. Sit in your pink bubble and you'll be seen as non-threatening and a loving presence. And then who knows, you might get more than you expected. And my final tip is to practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And the more you'll start to understand and trust the information that you're getting. Stay consistent with how you're grounding yourself and what question you're asking. If you do something completely different every time, it'll be pretty hard for you to determine what's not working. If you'd like to develop your animal communication skills more, check out my other videos or visit my website for free trainings and my animal communication course. Let me know if you have questions in the comments and until next time, keep connecting with your horses.